Ezekiel chapter 24, verse 15. Also the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away the desire of thy eyes with a stroke. Now the modern Bibles want to make it easy, simple. So when we go over here to the modern Bible, we have, let's see, stroke. We have the, the CSB fatal blow. A single stroke. Suddenly. Plague. Fatal blow. And so on and so on and so on. Now, I was just in the hospital last month. And I didn't hear over the loudspeaker speaker fatal blows alert. I heard stroke alert. And it can't be always one fatal blow because I know people in my own family who have had stroke after stroke after stroke after stroke in an afternoon. And the fact is, these modern Bibles, if you were to go to a medical doctor, the medical doctor would say, hey, that ain't right. A person can have a stroke after stroke after stroke and still not die. A person can have strokes all day long and at the end of the day die. A person can have a stroke and die. But not all strokes are a fatal blow. I'm sure you know somebody who's had a stroke and they've re it was a long process road, but they recovered. So the means of death is going to be a stroke. A single stroke. Yet neither shall thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. Forbear to cry, make no mention mourning for the dead and the Jews made a mourning and they made a thing for the dead they would even hire mourners bind the tire that's the kind of thing for the head for the hair upon thy head upon thee and put thy shoes upon thy feet and cover not thy lips and eat not the bread of men. So I spank unto the people in the morning, and even my wife died. Well, now look at that. I know Baptist preachers get in the pulpit, and they rank on marriage, they rank on their marriage, their wife, and they, and they just make a laughter and a joke of marriage. God said, Ezekiel, the desire of thy eyes, and Ezekiel said, my wife died. God said, desire of thy eyes. That's how God described the marriage between Ezekiel and his wife. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. Now that's hard. I've been a widower twice. If that woman, the wife of Ezekiel, was the desire of his eyes, and she died, Though God said it, it had to be torture, not even to weep. And I read some people say, well, how cruel God is to take his wife like that. Well, actually, no. Because with the coming events that's going to come in the near future, it actually would be a blessing for him not to have his wife to go through. God just took them too early. No, you don't know what too late would have been done in their life.
And sometimes because of a cancer, because of a de disease or something, it's the best thing when it happens, the Lord takes them home, especially if they're saved, that, hey, you know what? They're not suffering no more. And we just had some tornadoes go through the Midwest uh, of, of America this last couple of days. Let's say a Christian died on Thursday or Friday. Oh, why did God take him there? Maybe so he didn't have to see what the damage would have been to his home, his house, his businesses, or his family. I don't know. I'm not giving you the answers. Because I don't know the answers. But death happens, and it's the wages of sin is death, and Ezekiel's wife was a sinner. And the people said unto me, Wilt thou not tell us what these things are to us, that thou doest so? Well, what is the marvel of the Jews? They also saw the love between Ezekiel and his wife, that, hey, buddy, you ain't crying. You're not mourning. Now, we would say today, but you know, it wasn't a good marriage, or he was hard, or he didn't care about her, he didn't love her. No, no, God told him not to mourn, not to weep, not to be a mourner. And the Jews are like, what's going on? Then I answered them, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Speak unto the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the temple. Pollute it. The Gentiles are going to go into the most holy place. They're going to go into the holy place. I'm going to allow it. And can you just imagine the ruckus that the Gentiles had in those places? Being Gentiles, being savages that they were. I forget, is it is it Luke's gospel or John's gospel? And many things that they've done to Jesus they are not recorded in this book. And you can only imagine. The excellent... The excellency of your strength, that temple. And it was the excellency of the strength of, of the Jews in Jesus, not the temple. Look how great the temple is. What about God? I heard today people tell testimonies of their family Christian traditions. And I listened to it, and there was a lot of good traditions. But there was no God and no Jesus in Christmas. And then you're going to try and tell me, well, what's wrong with Christmas? The complete elimination of Jesus. The desire of your eyes, their wives. And that which your soul pity is. So there was love for their wives. They have beautiful women. And your sons and your daughters whom ye... Whom ye have left shall fall by the sword. War. Barbarians. Torture. Ye shall do as I have done. Je Ezekiel. You shall not cover your lips. Nor eat the bread of men. You, you, you're going to go into captivity. You're going to be overpowered. You're going to run. You're going to retreat. It's going to be mayhem. As you watch your wife and your children die. And your tires, what goes on the head, shall be upon your heads. Your shoes upon your feet. You're moving. You're going. That was the same thing when they came out of Egypt. Put your shoes on your feet. Get ready to go. They are leaving the promised land as they came out of Egypt. You shall not mourn nor weep. But you shall pine away death, slow death, for your iniquities. 
It's all because of sin. And mourn one toward another. Thus equals a sign. Uh-oh, Jews require a sign. What a sign. What an event that God would have his people to be. According to all that he has done, shall ye do. No mourning, shoes on your feet, no bread, no sorrows. And when he, this cometh, here it is again, ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. When your wives die and your children die, you got ain't no time to mourn for them. You ain't got no time. Your misery, your woes, your tribulation, you can't even cry. Also thou son of man, shall it not be in the day when I take from them their strength, The joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their minds, their sons and their daughters. It's coming. That he that escapeth in that day shall come unto thee to cause thee to hear with thine ears. They're going to come to you, Ezekiel. They're going to give you their gripes and their troubles and their problems. Like Ezekiel wants to hear it. Because Ezekiel's been telling them all along, just repent, get right. God's telling you, judgment's coming. In that day shall thy mouth be open to him that escapeth. And thou shalt... Speak and be no more dumb. Now remember early part Ezekiel, God closed the mouth of Ezekiel. And the only time Ezekiel could open his mouth is when God put a word in his mouth. That's why he kept saying that. And the word of God came with him. The word of God came to him. Because any other time Ezekiel couldn't speak. Thou shalt be a sign unto them. And they shall know that I am the Lord again. You know, Ezekiel, what happened to you and your wife? You're right. It happened to me and my family. And Ezekiel, well, you know it's God. I warned you. I warned you. 